afternoon. Uh, thank you so much. And I, I, I thought I'd call this Hungry to Act, actually. Uh, and Hungry to Act, this, uh, this guy. Uh, take a look around. You all started off like that. I don't know what happened, but, but you did. Um, and I thought I'd talk about educating people. Uh, we've talked a lot about, um, about the whole development of the individual and, and how can we make things happen and can we, can we live a brainstorm and all these sorts of things. And I, and I thought I'd just go back in time. This is uh, Mount Rushmore and uh, second on the left is Franklin, oh, not Franklin, uh, Thomas, and Je Thomas Jefferson. And Thomas, Thomas Jefferson, um, way back uh, in uh, 1787, uh, proposed a bill uh, which has sort of become the, the, the classic of let's educate the people. Um, we're going to have some schools, uh, we're going to bring them under, under, under control, we're going to make free education for everyone. And I thought I'd just sort of show you the schools will be under a visitor who annually chooses a boy of best genius in the school and send him forward to one of the grammar schools for teaching Greek, Latin, geography and the higher branches of numerical arithmetic. And trial will be made at the grammar schools one or two years and the best genius of a whole school will be selected and continues for six years. And the residue dismissed. By this means, 20 of the best geniuses will be raked from the rubbish annually. How many of you are rubbish? Uh, and here we have uh, British schools, 1875. Here we have one in 1904. Here we have one in 1932. Here we have one in 1947. Here we have one in 1965. Here we have one in 2010. And here we have a college taken a couple of weeks ago. What do you notice, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, but let's have a look at how we started and what we're talking about raking the rubbish. I've got some sound here, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just what you know, as, uh, as Thomas Jefferson thought it was, but it's, it's also who you know. Have you noticed that? It's who you know. The trouble is, if you know a thousand people and they all think you're an idiot, it's probably better not to know anybody. So it's also how you know them. And that history really goes with you. This kid will always be known as the boy who stuck his head through the plastic chair at school. <laughs> <laughs> and the fire service had to get called out. And you know that's going to happen. And also, sometimes you will be in a position where colleagues do stupid things, and the question is, when do you tell them? When do you tell this guy that that is not how you spell stop? And the other thing which happens is that sometimes we get caught up in rules. Now, in our country, we have health and safety rules. And uh, I took this photograph near the executive of the people who run the whole health and safety campaign. And I took this picture and I said, what the hell is all that about? They said, oh, well, we have to signpost footpaths because if we don't signpost them, then people could get lost. And I said, but there are no names. They said, yeah, yeah, because people would rearrange them. And so we had to take the names off in case people go to the wrong place. And I said, why have you got a camera? And they said, oh, we want to try and catch the people rearranging them. And I said, does it matter? And then you also find some other things. This is one of our universities, the cradle of dreams, growing up wonderful people. CCTV camera, CCTV is used in this building for the purpose of crime. And I said, oh, are you sure? I said, oh, yeah, absolutely sure. I said, is it not for the prevention of crime? This is <laughs> silly ass. Silly ass. And I think that's a difference, really, between leadership and managership. 
You know, I think a lot of us talk about leadership and really what we need is manager. So does anybody here find that in your average day what you do could be defined as a little bit crap? <laughs> and there are other times in which you go, that was a fantastic day, a fantastic day. So when I spoke to his mum and I said, what do you hope for him? She said, I hope you'll be happy, actually. She said, I hope you'll be at ease and considerate and kind and resourceful and inquisitive and healthy. But above all, I want to be hopeful. Can you imagine that? No mention of grades, no mention of geography, no mention of history, none of that stuff. Just to be happy and to be hopeful. And wouldn't that be great? So the question is, how do we measure success? Does anybody here know some people who are academically superb, but actually a bit stupid? <laughs> Yeah. 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 And I can tell you some interesting things actually. If you if you if you really want to get analytical, um, in our society you want positive people or negative people. Yeah. Oh, some of you are a bit concerned about this one. Positive <laughs> or negative, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I guess so. And would you like people to play an active or a passive role in society? Yeah. Oh, of course we do. What do we want in our schools? Sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 this is a question. I'm not going to answer any questions. I sit, you tell, I sit. Um, because uh, positive and passive people accept things. Have you ever, have you ever found some people and you go, let's do this? And they go, yeah. How cool is that? Um, some passive <laughs> negative people, have you ever spoken to somebody, let's do this? And they go, no, 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 no. Like talking to a stick of asparagus. The, the negative active people reject. I, I don't know about you, but I prefer people re to reject than be like that. Have you, have you ever found somebody just like that? And, and I go, until they go, and then I'm happy. At least you've come to life. Um, and uh, positive, active people are independent. Has anybody here found some people who are really independent? It's marvelous what they do. I, a, a, a great friend of mine, uh, Sir John Jones, sent me a picture of a primary school, so little, little young kids. And these little young kids were going to do a graduation as to, 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 to show the passage of time. You know, when they move from being little kids into being big kids. They move from a little school into a big school. And they were going to make presents for their parents. And the question is, what are you going to make? And they decided we're going to do potted plants. You know pot plants? And, and he said, do you want me to guide you? They said, no, 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 we can do it ourselves. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, we're fine, we're fine. Do you want me to help? No, no, no. He said, look, if you're going to grow plants, they've got to be easy to grow. I'm not coming in over the vacation to water them. They've got to be easy, simple. One week before the graduation ceremony, at which the parents in a place like this would be coming up, and their child would be giving them a present to celebrate their time at school, he took a photograph of what they'd grown, and he said, I have a problem. <laughs> <coughs> I would like you to be independent, but not that independent. So we get these things happening. And, and, the, 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 and just, uh, just for fun, if we have a look at how we develop, and if you have a look at trees, for example, and you split a tree down, you'll find there's as much going on underneath as there is above. So let's look at education under that sort of circumstance. We teach maths and history and science, and we teach geography and languages and economics and all that sort of stuff. And if you do well, we give you a certificate. Have you noticed this sort of stuff? And we cover it up with certificates, loads of certificates. Underneath, which we don't see, is this stuff about at ease and considerate and kind and resourceful and all the rest of it. We don't see those. The difficult, and we don't test them. I mean, it's pretty hard, isn't it? So, uh, so what grade kind are you? Oh, any, uh, I've really got to increase my kind grades. <laughs> or else I might just kill that teacher. <laughs> you know? and, and as we start attacking those, what happens is we get rid of the very roots. And that's the tree I buy in a garden shop. And I plant it and it dies. Has anybody else ever done that? Because a tree to buy has got deep roots and it's got nothing on the top, but I just feel embarrassed about planting a stick. Has anybody here ever met people who've got lots and lots and lots of qualifications, but they can't do anything? <laughs> They're a bit stupid. Quite a lot of universities have got that. Now, but, uh, and so when those certificates are no longer needed, that is a dead tree. And I think there's something about the process which we're doing in education, which is allowing that to happen because we're demanding people get good grades, and we don't know how to measure the stuff which really matters. Has anybody here ever found yourself hiring somebody who's got good grades, but you don't like them? So where do we get a grade on likability? Because that's the thing which matters, isn't it? So maybe what's happened is in embarking upon trying to teach everything, it's going a bit wrong. And what do we tell girls like this, who are about to embark upon their career? And they themselves may have a bit of history, 
but they've also got destiny. So I thought, let's do a test to see how good we are. So just imagine that here in Telex Vilnius, you're going to elect a new world leader. I'm going to give you four candidates. Four candidates. Candidate A associates with crooked politicians, consults with astrologists, had two major affairs, chain, sm chain smokes, and drinks up to eight to ten martinis a day. Some of you are going, oh, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> eight to ten, I don't go over the rest. Eight to ten, anybody who can drink eight to ten martinis gets my vote. Here's candidate B, kicked out of office twice, sleeps until noon, used opium in college, and drinks a bottle and a half of whiskey every evening. Oh, martinis, whiskey, that's a difficult decision. <laughs> Now how about candidate C, decorated war hero, vegetarian, non-smoker, drinks an occasional beer, never cheated on their spouse. Never. And candidate D, dropped out of college, cheated his friend out of money, tends to be impossible to deal with, but occasional flashes of inspiration. So now, make your selection. And just by noise, we will see who you've chosen. So how many of you chose candidate A? Make some noise. That's quite a lot of you. Candidate A, Franklin Roosevelt, well done. How about candidate B, kicked out of office twice, sleeps until noon. Okay, more votes for him. Uh, Winston Churchill. What about a wonderful decorated war hero, vegetarian, non-smoker, drinks in a cake, boring. <laughs> That's Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Phew, some of you are saying. And uh, candidate D, dropped out of college. <laughs> Steve Jobs. <laughs> so maybe college results aren't that important. <laughs> uh, and that takes you into history or destiny. And have a look at society. And uh, are we equipping people to, play, to fill a job? Get a job, I need a job. Or to play a role? And isn't that extraordinary? And how do we measure that success? How could we measure it? But more importantly, how should we measure it? And I put it to you that maybe the way we're doing it is a little bit old. And maybe there's a better way. Maybe there's a better way. And we can observe and have a look at things. This was in San Antonio two weeks ago, where some 14 and 15 year olds were explaining to an audience of 900 people how their schools should look and how their schools should be built. And they were saying it to architects. How do I measure that? Do you know, I don't care what grades they get, do you? If they can do that sort of thing. And the question is, when do we measure this success? When are we going to determine whether she is rubbish or she's the genius. When do we do that? And it is a changing world, you know? If you just look at electric light and mass automobiles, electric light was a guy, uh, he uh, flunked school, he got taken out of school when he was five years old because he didn't get on, and he's homeschooled. That's Thomas Edison. And when Thomas Edison founded the Edison Electric Light Company, about three years later, he took on an apprentice who had also been kicked out of school because he couldn't concentrate. He spent most of his time fiddling with, with watches. A guy called Henry Ford. So maybe there's a direct correlation. Maybe there's a direct correlation. And if we just have a look at what's happened just since 1997, just kids who are now in our country embarking upon exams, and you look at what's coped, what they've had to cope with, just in those years, we've had all this lot happen. GPS through to MP3, through to reality TV, through to ticketless airlines, right the way down into online communities where photographs of what's happening in this room are posted on Facebook within seconds. I don't know if studying 18th century material and being tested in an 18th century way tell us whether we're growing young people who are capable and it's a tragedy, isn't it, when you find young people saying, I can't get a job. So what role do you want to fill? And that is, ladies and gentlemen, is sort of what I spend my time doing now. Uh, I started off life as a chartered accountant. I'm fully reformed. And I spent my time working, working with kids. And learning is interesting because we have an odd construct. You know, we genuinely think we take young from society, separate from the rest of society, divide them up based on when they were born, split them out into little groups of 25, split it up in little time zones of, of one hour at a time, put them into little separate cubicles, give them some stuff, test it, allocate some grades to rake, and then we launch them back into society. <laughs> Doesn't seem right, really, does it? Doesn't seem right. And if you remember at school, quite often, rather than, rather than the teachers being able to 
develop the skills that you have, quite often what they had to do was to deal with what you couldn't do. What a weird way of doing things. I know what I'll do, I'll recruit someone, and I'll look at all the things he's really shitty at, and I'll spend all my time helping him get rid of those. The stuff he's good at, I don't care. It's just not the right, it can't be right. So what we can then do is to say, well, what's the world today? And in general, do you think in the world today you've got plenty of support, you've got plenty of help, you can do whatever you like, or do you feel like you're a bit on your own? And do you think that the world is easy or complex? And if you had to draw a path of where you might spend your time, if you're me, it's spent out there. I spend a whole stack of stuff and I'm entirely on my own, it's really complicated, it's very hard to find advice. Has anybody else found that sort of stuff going on? You know, I go into a computer shop and they tell me the right thing to buy, and there's a better one, half the price, faster, cheaper, better looking the next day. That's me. So let's look at what we do in schools. And in schools, generally, we teach down there because we can control it. I'll take something easy, I'll give you lots of support, and we'll do all that stuff. I can assess it. Because if I made it complicated, that's really time consuming. On the other hand, if you can do it already, then as a teacher, I'll be thinking, what the hell am I doing? And if it's out in that top corner, that's really unpredictable, really difficult to assess. So a lot of kids at school are like this. And actually, I think they should be like that. Don't you? So how can we do that? Well, we can talk to them. We can see what they want to do. We could say, why don't students choose their own teachers? Wouldn't that be good? So if a teacher isn't picked, time to go. What about if teachers brought in experts, real experts? Instead of planning a lesson, just plan how to get somebody in who knows what they're talking about. Why, why can't we have normal vacation breaks? You know, just like everybody else. I'll take three weeks when I can. Oh, how will you keep up? I'll just have to work that out. Why don't we build on strengths? And why don't we coach people? And why don't we have it so everybody learns? Isn't it ridiculous we call teachers and learners? That can't be right, can it? It can't be right. Maybe we have to work out some different way of measuring people and trust people. And then it could be quite exciting. We work with kids, we take them out. We get them into people who are doing great stuff and get them to meet in a small way so they can start seeing what can be done. Got to be better than sitting in a classroom, hasn't it? It's got to be better than sitting in a classroom. And where can that take you? Well, that can take you into letting loose a little bit. Instead of getting too uptight, just loosen down. I call it loose tight. Has anybody found, I'd love to know what I'm supposed to do, but let me get on with it myself? Wouldn't that be great? Don't you think? What I want you to do is I want you to be in here, this place, and then when you leave, I want you to carve out a fantastic role for yourself in society, wherever it happens to be. And then you can say, is, that, is this really the best we can do? Or is it just the least bad? And that takes you into experiences. Ladies and gentlemen, which circle in the middle is the larger? The left or the right? Who thinks the left? Who thinks the right? Who thinks it's the same? You're wrong. <laughs> you see, you learned that one, didn't you? <laughs> but you're wrong. Which now is larger? <laughs> the left or the right? Who thinks the left? Who thinks the right? Who thinks they're the same? <laughs> Not so certain now, are you? <laughs> and they are the same. And they are the same. How many legs has this elephant got? <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. Here's a wonderful one, exam question. Peter, expand A plus B to the N. Okay, I'll expand it. <laughs> hey, I, I can expand it quite a lot. You know, I can, I, can, I can keep going. I can go all the way. Do you think he's marked up or down? <laughs> he's marked down, very funny Peter. Actually, yes, very funny Peter. So we have to really, really, really look at things. And then we can look at our own brains. This is our brains firing off. Have you ever found yourself getting on an escalator which is off? Has anyone gone up to me? Oh my God, it's stopped. How do I get on? <laughs> Have you ever done that? So these things really go on. So what if? And then we can think again. School, there's one which we designed. Inside, cafe looked like that. That's not good enough. Let's change it for that. So it has to be a continuous development all the time, all the time. And then we can talk about leaving our mark. And then what we can do is to say, who am I great at? What am I great at? What am I really good at? And let's do the right thing, which might not be the done thing. 
And you know, the journey might be tough. <laughs> I took this photograph. Do you think I turned the engine off? No way. <laughs> and if we take it to its absolute, you hear a lot of people talking about opportunities nowhere. Let's insert just a little space. How simple is that? One little space bar. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a uh, this is a movie made by nine-year-old kids on iPods, and uh, and they published it, and they showed showed it at the local cinema, and rather than showing the whole thing, I'm going to. Win Hill Pictures presents. A film about Bishop's daughter. And it's they showed that at the local cinema. They managed to interview lots of people, including a famous writer and all this sort of stuff. And I just thought I'd show you, at the very end, the enthusiasm of kids, if I can get there. Hi, my name is Heather, and I'm Tweer. That's a man. My name is Dodo. I'm Cameron. I'm Cameron. I mean, I'm Louis. <laughs> I'm Cameron. Hi, I'm Louie. <laughs> so, uh, let's there to dream. Let's there to act. And be hungry to act. Are you hungry to act? Yeah. Do you think we can make a difference? Do you think it's possible? If each person here did something better for someone else, wouldn't the world be better? Yeah. I mean, hungry to act. I, I mean, Hungry <laughs> to act. Thank you very much, Lisa.